What's going on guys? It's OmniArc and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be sharing with you my epic commander tier list for Rise of Kingdoms. Now, I wanted to make a video like this weeks ago, but I was hoping that somewhere around March or April, we would see a few new civilizations in the game, which would of course bring epic commanders with them. However, March has come and gone. April has come and gone, and we haven't heard anything about new civilizations. It's been over a year, I think at this point, since they've added new civilizations. So I do think it's overdue. However, um, with that being said, we don't know when the new ones are coming. So I'm just going to make this video now with the 13 Epic Commanders that we already have in the game. There's one for each civilization. And then of course there's Alohar and Kiera, both of which I don't actually think were real commanders in real life. I think they kind of just represent tribal uh, civilizations in general. Now, the other reason I postponed making this video is because I was hoping somebody would make a tier list, uh, a tier maker template for these commanders and i saw a couple on there but they were a little bit old and the quality was pretty bad so i actually went and made this tier maker template myself i went in and edited all the little emblems that you see down here um, and that took a lot of time so if you guys actually want to uh, make your own tier list you can check the links in the description below to make your own the template will be there for you and then you can screenshot it and send it to me on discord or you can maybe even record your own video and explain why your tier list is the way it is i would absolutely love that and if you guys want to show support for me taking the amount of time to make this tier list template drop a thumbs up on the video with that being said let's jump into it now before i drop by bars into where he goes i want to let you guys know that this tier list is my opinion right it's my opinion it is somewhat based on statistics and some facts but overall the usefulness of a commander depends on how you use them what commanders you pair them with how powerful your account is etc so you know take this with a grain of salt this is not statistically and technically backed by data this is just um what i feel is the correct tier list uh based on again my opinions and my experience with the game so it looks like tier maker went ahead and put these in alphabetical order which i'm totally okay with so we're gonna start with buy bars now i've talked a lot actually in my recent video about pelagius about buy bars as well and if you know me, you'll know that I actually think Vibars is a fantastic cavalry commander. Um, he is a kind of a one trick pony, so he's not as versatile as some of the other epic commanders. So with that being said, I think I'm going to drop by bars in the A tier. Um, that may be a pretty high ranking for by bars because again, he just does big AOE with a slowdown buffs cavalry attack. That's really what he does best. Um, that's kind of all that he does, but I think he does that really well. And again, his AOE damage is really high for an Epic commander. I think that that's often overlooked. Um, so I'm going to put by bars in the A tier. I think he's a very useful Epic commander and a, a very good one at that. Next up, we have Belisarius. I kind of, uh, see by bars and Belisarius as, as cousins, even though I know historically they're completely different they were introduced in the game at the same time they're both cavalry commanders um i think belisarius is less impressive than by bars i think he offers mobility which makes him really interesting for killing farmers but ultimately he i don't think he deals as much damage as by bars he more so is a debuffing commander so i'm gonna put him in the b tier he's kind of right smack dab in the middle here um i think if he had a little bit higher damage factor then that would make him more useful because he does have some cool debuffs and again he does have the mobility tree which makes him kind of like a budget version of Cao Cao. um so he's really interesting in that regard but again um i just don't he just doesn't deal that much damage and i'm really interested in him dealing damage now he is also a peacekeeper so you know he does have utility there but ultimately in terms of usefulness i think b tier is is a pretty fair uh ranking for belisarius next we're going to talk about Boudica. Now, Boudica is interesting because she is a uh, pretty good early game. Actually, she is a universal commander. Um, she doesn't care what troop type that you give her. She also does have a pretty high single target damage factor with some rage regeneration, some healing. Boudica does a lot of really great stuff. Um, she is one of the best peacekeepers in the game. I think um, she's the third best peacekeeper in the game, in my opinion. So she does have a lot of utility, definitely a better peacekeeper than Belisarius. Um, however, the, the problem with Boudica is that in the late game, you're not going to use her very much. And that's because in terms of a mixed army, you still have better options than Boudica. Um, I don't really get much use out of her anymore other than killing barbarians. And 
even compared to Belisarius, even though she does deal more single target damage factor with her skill damage, um, and she is a better um, peacekeeper than Belisarius, uh, I think that if who are you more likely to go into a fight with, right? Belisarius at least can kill farmers, so there's that. Um, and so Boudica, you know, early game, I would put her probably S tier, but late game, I would put her probably C tier. So it's hard to it's hard to say uh, fundamentally where she goes but in my opinion i just am not that impressed by Boudica in the late game even for free to play players it may be difficult to find use for Boudica. so unfortunately i want to put her higher but i feel like Boudica goes in the c tier um again because she's a universal commander she just you know there's more to be desired there unfortunately now Let's talk about Ulji Mundak. He is one of two epic commanders that cares about infantry and actually cares more about infantry than his uh, his other counterpart, Sun Tzu. Um, the thing about Ulji Mundak is that he really is your only option for uh, a primary infantry commander. You could do Sun Tzu, but I think Sun Tzu is better off mainly focusing on skill damage and AoE, which really just leaves you with Ulji. And because of that, Ulji is in a unique position where you're probably going to use him, right? You're probably going to use him for infantry uh, marches if you don't have a legendary uh, option. Um, you're probably going to see Ulji Mundak in the Sunset Canyon as well because of the same reason. There's a lot of infantry in Sunset Canyon. Um, with that being said, though, he is a garrison commander and some people want to use him on the wall i just don't think he's a great option for that because uh he has the attack tree and i think the attack tree is just not that great for a garrison commander and with that being said we're dropping Ulji mundak in the c tier um again you know this this may come as a shock to some of you guys some of you may really love Ulji mundak and you may have your reasons you know for example if he gets swarmed his fourth skill pops off a lot um and that's true however you know, if you're a free-to-play player, if you're using old Mundok, you probably shouldn't get swarmed anyway, so I'm not a huge fan of that skill. Um, and, you know, it's it's rough because, again, you're probably going to get use out of him, you know, because he is really your only option. But at the end of the day, he doesn't really have a huge uh, damage factor. He does have a nice defense debuff on his primary skill. Um, and, he, again, his, his buffing to infantry is good. But, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, Am I going to really use Ulji Mundok? I don't think so. And because of that, he is in the C tier. Again, I'm not that impressed with him. That's unfortunately the reality. Next, let's talk about Herman. Um, Herman is an archer commander that I really like because he has a very useful uh, primary skill where he can silence an enemy for two uh, two seconds, two turns, basically, and they can't use their active skills in that time, which is really unique. It's the, he's the only epic commander that can do that. Um, I think, uh, El Cid also can do this, but he's legendary and only does it for one turn, although it is a little bit more powerful with El Cid. Um, with that being said, he does, he does buff, uh, archers a decent amount. Now it is some March speed instead of like maybe just straight up stats that are useful in battle. But regardless, it is nice to have a fast archer march out on the battlefield. His single target damage factor is pretty good as well. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop Herman in the A tier. I think what he does, he does really well. He has a very specific niche role. And if you're gonna be using archers out in the open field, I think Herman is a great choice. He also could be used in your garrison, which is another fine choice for him as well. Um, we do have a full video on garrison commanders. We've talked about garrison commanders twice so far, once with him and once with Ulji. If you guys are curious about garrison commanders, check that video out. We talk about Herman in that video. Um, but I think Herman does, again, he does his job really well. Um, I don't really see, there's not too many downsides to Herman. Um, there is, you know, his fourth skill I, is pretty good, but I wish it was a little bit more powerful. I mean, a 10% buff to normal attack damage is almost irrelevant, right? It's very, very, it's not that noticeable, right? It's not that noticeable. And he does have some rage regeneration, but it's only a 10% chance to get a hundred rage. Whereas if you look at somebody like Pelagius, Pelagius is guaranteed a hundred rage. Every time he uses his active skill, Boudica is guaranteed 50 rage. So Herman's rage regeneration, when it goes off is really, really nice, but it is only a 10% chance of it going off any in any given turn. So 
you know he he does have a couple areas that are holding him back from s tier um but so with that being said i'm gonna drop in the a tier i think that's a solid ranking for herman next let's talk about our girl joan of arc i've talked about joan of arc a ton um i think joan of arc is a fantastic commander definitely an, an exceptionally good commander in the early game and still very useful in the late game she she's the best universal gatherer in the entire game she's super super great at that she also buffs you and your nearby allied armies by an insane amount um, which gives her you know some of the best support in the entire game um just buffing you and your allies it's insane it doesn't seem like there's a cooldown or a cap on the number of allies that she can buff um and the buff is pretty powerful as well and it buffs all true types which is super super good she also increases your army's damage your normal attack damage by a decent amount again normal attack damage doesn't interest me that much but it's still there um and she also has the support tree which does have rejuvenate giving you 150 rage uh every time that that goes off so you know that's interesting as well you could potentially use her as a primary commander um and with that being said i'm actually going to drop her right in the s tier i think joan of arc is just an incredibly good commander again exceptionally good in the early game because she's great with mixed armies and she also is insane at gathering and then really great in the late game because she still can support you and your allies on the battlefield now in the past i've had people tell me that her primary skill was actually nerfed and it only buffs your armies not your uh your armies of your alliance members that is false i actually tested this the other day i didn't i didn't test it my uh, my alliance tested it um and you do actually buff your alliance members with joan of arc's active skill um the radius is actually pretty decent as well it's probably about the size of e song uh, aoe maybe a little bit bigger actually um so i don't know a lot of people have told me that a lot of people have told me that her active skill doesn't buff your alliance um I tested it i have screenshots it does so i don't know what that what the inconsistency is there because i've heard other people test and say it doesn't so i don't know but from what i've seen she does buff your alliance members and because of that she is s tier if it weren't for that maybe she maybe she would fall to a tier um, but as it stands from what i've seen I, I do think she is an s tier epic commander next let's move on to kiera she is the new girl on the block maybe it's kira maybe it's kiera i don't know um she is interesting because of course as you can see from the screenshot i have her at level one which means i'm still focusing on leveling up her primary skill which means i haven't used her in the open field so anything that i say right now about kiara is speculative it is speculative i want that to be clear um but she already got a nerf right she already got a nerf they came out with her skills they said one thing about her her fourth skill and then completely changed their mind about it shortly after and because of that um she would have been an s tier commander truthfully i i think right at the very worst an a tier commander however after that nerf i'm really not impressed with kiera i'm really not i'm dropping her in the c tier that's based on um it's just based on my opinion again this is theory because i obviously don't have her expertise i haven't used her so please take this with a grain of salt but her primary skill even when expertise is not that impressive right if it's it's straight up in aoe with an additional damage factor but it also is uh weakened by 15 percent per target hit it can only hit a maximum of three targets and i'm just not that impressed with it right because if you look at somebody like by bars his active his um active skill not only can hit five targets but it deals um around the same damage if not slightly more depending on if you have kiara expertise or not her second skill is mainly good in swirly crisis she does do an extra 35 percent damage to barbarians just like lohar does however she lacks the experience gain that lohar does and that's what makes lohar so incredible um and again her fourth skill you have a 10 percent chance of buffing skill damage by 80 percent for three seconds if a skill attack goes off in that time it's going to be a huge huge damage if it's somebody like isong but you know at the same time like it's only a 10 percent chance of going off where if you look at somebody like sun Tzu, their skill damage buff is constant same thing with isong ye constant and i know he's legendary so that's that but um again it i would have rather seen uh, a 25 or a 20 percent skill damage buff constant to her rather than a 10 percent chance of it going off i just i'm not that excited about that right again if it was pre-nerf she would be higher but because of that i'm just not that impressed and then her buff to archers is very small it's 10 percent to attack and defense so 
20%. That's around uh, on par with other epics. Um, I think her expertise probably should have buffed this to 1515 rather than um, try to, uh, you know, overcome the weakness of her primary skill because even with the expertise, her primary skill is still not impressive to me. So, you know, I, I think they could have done better with her expertise as well. I think C tier is, is a solid ranking for her. And again, this is still uh, theory. I would love to get my hands on her to test her out more, but I'm again, I'm not that impressed. Next, we're going to talk about Kusunoki, another epic commander focused on archers. And the last one that we're going to be talking about in this video, the last archer commander, uh, Kusunoki is interesting because he also has a unique uh, active skill where he removes negative control effects from his army, which is interesting. He also buffs archers more than Herman in terms of attack and defense. His AOE is pretty good. Um, it's only an 800 damage factor if you include the additional damage factor as well. So it's definitely one of the weaker AOEs that we've talked about. But again, it does have that unique instance of removing negative control effects, uh, which is really, really great, especially if you put him on your garrison. Um, he has, you know, just great utility on your garrison. I think he's a great choice for your garrison. Um, so with that being said, you know, there's a lot to love about him. He also has the 10% chance of doing an additional 900 damage factor um, over the course of two seconds. I just want to double check that here. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of additional damage damage factor going on with kusunoki and with that being said i'm dropping him in the eights here um i think again he has a very unique uh active skill he's great on your wall he has that aoe he has additional damage factor he buffs archers more than any other epic commander and with that being said he deserves the a tier ranking in my opinion next we're going to be talking about lohar we just made a video about Lohar talking about what he is good for. He is literally good for PVE content and nothing else. Um, he is the best commander for leveling up your other commanders, but mostly he's going to be useless. And because of that, my boy Lohar is going in the D tier. Like, look, I know why he, do he doesn't really deserve the D tier, right? Let's just be clear. Lohar, you're going to use him the entire game. He's great for leveling up your commanders. And if you're doing events like um, Karak Ceremony and things like that, Lohar is going to be invaluable for those events, right? So with that being said, the reason he's Z tier is because he can't fight other players. That's that's why. And, and that's really what we've based most of this on. If you've been paying attention, most of this tier list is, is talking about PVP, right? We're talking about PVP mostly. Um, if they're useful somewhere else, then they kind of get a little, maybe a little bit of a bump, but mostly we're talking about PVP in this video. And in the open field, Lohar is, is, uh, the worst you could have like objectively. He's just terrible damage factor, very small healing chance to do a ton of healing when he leaves battle two of his skills are irrelevant his talent trees are trash for fighting other players you know in that regard he's definitely a d tier commander and again i i'm not ignorant to the fact that he has a role and he's the best out of all these he's best at killing barbarians out of anybody else um but again this is mostly talking about pvp next we're going to be talking about osman uh, osman is interesting because he is also a one trick pony he does tons of single target skill damage he does a decent amount of an additional skill damage on top of that he also brings a ton of troops to the army 10 percent more than anybody else that we've talked about so far uh, and because of that he's a very vanilla commander and i think he deserves the b tier now there is an argument to be made where you know uh, his active skill damage when when paired with with certain commanders could be overwhelmingly good i think that's more so true early game than late game as well but because of that uh, again he's a one trick pony i i kind of think he deserves the b tier now now that i'm looking at it you know him and Boudica, yeah is Boudica better than than osman in a pvp scenario it, I think it depends on the commander pairings. I think maybe that might be the case, maybe, which kind of contradicts why I put Lohar here. Um, so Osman would, I, I honestly want to put Osman somewhere in between these two because personally, personally speaking, I think he's a C tier commander, but I've seen people do some interesting things with Osman. And so I, I think he deserves the B tier again. I, I, I don't want to contradict myself too much here because of you know where i placed Boudica. Uh, i th again i think he he belongs somewhere maybe he doesn't quite deserve b tier um but i don't think he deserves c, c, c tier either i think he kind of goes right in the middle here but just to make the graph look prettier we're gonna put him right in the beats here um okay again this is all my opinion this is not like you can see this is not scientific all right 
let's talk about Pelagius this is the final cavalry commander we're going to be talking about in this video we made a video about Pelagius just a few days ago we talked about how he has incredibly good single target damage factor he has some healing he has really a uh, solid and reliable rage regeneration he has the skill tree uh, he buffs cavalry commanders uh, really really well he buffs your cavalry units really really well um, I think he's an excellent commander he can be put on your wall I don't think he's a great choice there but it is an option I actually think Pelagius is an S tier epic commander and again it's because I think he's the best cavalry commander in the epic tier for all the reasons that I just mentioned uh he's insanely good especially when paired with by bars um that combination really really is excellent I do think he's a little bit better than by bars even though by bars um does bo boost attack a little bit more uh, I just think that the um the utility that that we see with Pelagius is just even even better honestly than than by bars you know so and on top of that he buffs cavalry by 30 percent whereas uh, uh by bars buffs them by 20 percent so there's just a lot to love about him especially that rage regeneration there's just he there's just so much utility that he brings to the battlefield i think he deserves to be in the s tier that's my opinion i i really love Pelagius, especially if you can pair him with minamoto too like absolutely an incredible pairing so that's my opinion there i think that's a great choice next let's talk about scipio now Scipio is interesting because a lot of people hate on Scipio, man. A lot of people hate on Scipio. They love to hate on him because he's a universal epic commander. He doesn't care what tr uh, troops he brings to the battlefield. And because of that, uh, he doesn't have a specialty. And with that being said, you know, what I what I love about Scipio is that he is a tanky commander, right? He is arguably, uh, I think that you can't really debate i actually think he is the most tanky commander in the epic tier now now that i look about it look at it he's the best tank he's great for pairing with somebody like joan of arc for uh for buffing your nearby armies he doesn't care which troops you put in uh put with him which means in the early game he's really great uh not so much in the late game however i still find use for scipio out on the open field i personally still like him um, i know that's an unpopular opinion for somebody of my power level uh, but i do still think that there will be plenty of players who unlock um who are late game or maybe mid game or a t4 who will still be using scipio and still have use for scipio specifically for joan of arc and because of that i'm actually going to put scipio in the a tier uh again this is probably a uh a controversial opinion and realistically speaking he is the worst in the a tier right like he definitely deserves to be like uh, like a b plus tier i think um he kind of deserves to be right in the middle here because i do think that he is better than everyone else in the b tier but worse than everybody else in the a tier so realistically speaking i think scipio is a solid b plus tier uh however with that being said um I, I don't know. I, I just, I personally like him. I think he's very tanky. I think his utility with Joan of Arc is incredibly good, even late game, um, for kind of being tanky out on the open field. Now, there's the chance that he does get swarmed down because he is very slow and he is, uh, you know, still relatively weak, not very much damage factor, um, not very much DPS is what I'm trying to say. So, because of that, there are downsides to him. So, again, I know you're looking at this and saying he doesn't deserve a tier and i agree with you i think he deserves b plus tier um so keep that in mind but we're gonna put him in the a tier because i think he's closer to the a tier than he is the b tier so then maybe i guess he's technically an a minus uh tier but with that being said i think that's where scipio belongs next and finally we're going to be talking about sun tzu now i also made a commander video for sun tzu and i don't think that it's any question that he goes in the s tier there's just there's no point in dragging that out right like he's clearly the s tier commander that is in the number one spot i think he just he deserves to be the number one spot right um he does incredible aoe he has great rage regeneration in a group uh fighting scenario he buffs your skill damage in a constant reliable way he has the skill tree he's great on your garrison he's just doing it all he's great for pvp you still see him used by t5 players because he's just so good and i think he certainly deserves that now if we were good if we were going to go through and order these commanders right where this is the best in the tier this is the worst in the tier i think what we would do is is kind of go like this um i actually think wait a minute um hmm i think that would be the tier I think that might be the tier now again the biggest controversy here is probably with Boudicca and Osman uh, you know you could argue that they should be in the same tier or in alternate tiers um, I think you know looking 
back this might be more accurate maybe it depends on how you're using them right and if you're in the early game or late game um early game like i said Budico would definitely be up here late game she i think she's a c tier commander um and you know you may be more likely to use her i don't know i, I think now that i'm thinking about it i think this is probably how i'm gonna do it um i think you're you're probably more likely to use Boudica than Osman in the open fields. Uh, it depends. Who, you could pair Osman with certain commanders to, to make that not true. But, you know, I think in, in general, I think this is what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm confident with this. Um, so if you were angry about my Boudica pick early, hopefully you're, you are a little bit more satisfied now. But this is my tier list for epic commanders um there's a lot of great commanders as you can see um in the epic tier there are some that i'm less happy about um that doesn't mean that they're not useful like the b tier certainly has utility in a variety of ways um you may be using belisarius a lot actually because of his mobility tree like i said so this doesn't mean that objectively speaking uh pelagius is better than you know Boudica because again Boudica is better at killing barbs so it depends on what you're doing right so i want to make that abundantly clear this is a very rough uh rough around the edges right this is not set in stone this is not concrete or backed by data but this is how i would rank the epic commanders in rise of kingdoms guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it i would really appreciate it if you want to make your own tier list for epic commanders screenshot it and send it to me or make a video about it link will be in the description below to get this exact template for this video if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a new video here on youtube all my social media links including my discord are in the description below Follow me on Twitch to know when I go live playing Rise of Kingdoms. And also, if you jump in my Discord, you'll be notified anytime that a new video or I go live it happens. Uh, either one of those two things, it'll let you know. If you have any questions about any of these commanders that you see on the screen, or if you want me to make a specific commander guide for any of them, be sure to drop a comment down below. Let me know. If you have any questions about why I put certain commanders in which spot, for sure, ask me in the comments, and I will try to get back to every single one of you. And with that being said, guys, this has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.